Hello, this is Linda Betjes Nichols, and I have with me the most amazing woman, Demi Mateos. Welcome, Demi. Hi, Linda. How are you? Good, thank you. And you are on to your next cookbook. How cool is that? I love it. Your first one had all to do with your mother, and this one, you ended your other book um, about your father and having a restaurant of his own and and um, you know the influence that your dad had on you. And so now you're stepping into a new book and it's around your father and like masculine energy. And so tell us a little bit about that book, Jimmy. Oh, it's been um, building up in me for years, for like maybe two, three years. Um, when I went down to Greece, um, I had to let go of some anger and forgive some family members. And um, it just started to come up as all negative. And uh, thanks to you, actually, it came out to all positive stuff, which I was really excited about um, because now I'm more focused on that. So I'm really excited. And this book is just, it's amazing. And it keeps coming out even better and better each day as we write it. So I'm really excited about it. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. You've had a lot of emotional releases to go through as we've stepped through this uh, book building together. So I love being your, your book coach. All right. So the healthier Greek and you've got an American twist to this book, right? Yeah. And how, how does that work in? Because you weren't born in Greece. You were born in America. And yet you were totally raised Greek, right? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, my dad is from Chios, Greece, and my mom is from the same area in Greece, uh, her family, but she's born in America. And so um, my dad kind of came over the ships and off the boats um, to America as an immigrant. And... Um, you know, worked really hard. He ended up um, owning his own restaurant, uh, the one that he actually was um, washing dishes in uh, for five cents a plate. And it's, I always remember, yeah, yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember the stories of him telling us, um, you know, as children, what he did. And so growing up, we learned Greek and English. We went to a Greek American school. Uh, private school so we could learn Greek and we also learned the Greek uh, you know um, religion the Greek Orthodox religion so that was all part of our life uh, right. you know, everything we did was Greek yeah uh, right. yeah and so that's just I'm it's inside my blood I can't take I can't take it out <laughs> America. <laughs> yeah. And you're the middle child, so you have an older sister and a younger brother, and you even have a stepbrother because you lost your mom at 15. So your dad remarried someone from Greece. He went to Greece to, to marry his new wife. Is that right? Yes, it was an arranged marriage. <laughs> oh, wow. Isn't that something? Yeah. Wow. And how old was your dad? He was, was he in his 30s at that time? Oh no, he was fifty-seven when, when he, he got married. when he remarried. Okay, wow, it's a crazy yeah. town. <laughs> All right, so Demi, what what kind of led you to this book? I know you're frustrated with the American lifestyle, and and you even stepped into that lifestyle. Maybe tell us a little bit about how your life was going when you were working full time and had a child and. Um, then well, family members got sick and you were just picking up meals as you went and you weren't cooking as much. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, as I got older and had a family of my own, um, I worked three jobs and I ended up, um, not cooking at home a lot cause I would get home very tired and I ended up, we would eat out a lot and, uh, you know, my kid was little at that time. My son was, um, I think he was like three or between three and five he was very picky he didn't want to eat anything he only wanted to eat chicken nuggets and um what was that mac and cheese the little packages and it was very hard um you know to see him want to eat only those things and uh and i was very tired at the time so i didn't feel like cooking so i would just give him whatever he wanted you know mm -hmm. uh, yeah and it became you know a uh, 
really horrible on my health. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up getting very sick. And I remember just before me, um, you know, ending up in the hospital, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't get up the stairs. I didn't know what was going on. Um, I didn't know if it was because I was under a lot of stress at work. Right. Yeah. I was having panic attacks and anxiety attacks constantly. Wow. Yeah. And I was actually, I didn't know at the time, but I had diabetes and I didn't wow. know. Yeah. I was drinking a lot of water. I, I was, you know, constantly in the bathroom. Um, so I, I didn't know what was going on and, uh, it's just, it took over my body. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So your first book opens with you, um, having heart, something, what was going on with your heart and you were trying to yeah, decide if you were going to the hospital? Yeah, I thought I was having a heart attack. Mm-hmm. Um, one day after work, I got home and I just felt really off that day and my whole arm was just pulling and I remember um you know reading that a heart attack the first signs of a heart attack would be your arm and uh I wasn't sure if I was having a heart attack or not because I was always having a panic attack in the morning going to work so I knew my job was stressing me I just didn't know how bad it was affecting me right yeah yeah and so um that's when I drove to the hospital and um, was told uh, at the hospital that, um, why are you, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to kill yourself? And uh, my son heard that and he was screaming, uh, you know, mommy, no, are you dying? And he was so afraid. And, you know, I just went inward at that point. I got very depressed. Um, I was very scared because I was told a lot of things that, was wrong with my body that I didn't know because I wasn't going to the doctors as often. Mm -hmm. And when I did, they would just give me a pill to fix whatever the symptom was, but they weren't really correcting the issue from where it started, you know, and that's what really got me all, you know, while I was in the hospital, it was actually mother's day and I was in there for 12 days. My son was, and yeah. And there was, they were testing me constantly to see what was going on and where the issue was. So it was, it was a little craziness. Yeah. And it was scary. Very Very scary. scary. And and it was even scarier leaving the hospital with all the diagnoses. And what were they? I remember all of them. There were so many of them. Um, One was um, diabetes, which was very scary to me. Angina. So thank God it wasn't a heart attack, but there was, there was an issue with the heart. Uh, I had very high cholesterol. I was uh, also diagnosed um, with COPD at the time. Breathing. And I, was, uh, I had high blood pressure. Um, I remember my blood pressure was at like 185 over like 130. or so. It was really high. Wow. And what is it now, Demi? Oh, 119 over 70. Yes. <laughs> So cool. So cool. In fact, before you went to the hospital, you were about to buy a blouse size what? 32. And I was very upset about that because I did not. And I was really very tight, uh, 28. And I needed to get a 30, 32. And I was just really dreading it. I did not want to do it. Um, I also was having problems walking at the time. And I thought I was, I actually ordered a, a scooter at the time to find out information about it. Electric and, chair kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To move around with and <sighs> and I never got it. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Uh, what what blouse size ha- ha- did you, because I know you went down and then you came back up because you there were all these life challenges. And so, you know, I, I had reached been up 16, 18, and I'm almost there right now. Oh, sweet. <laughs> yes, sweet. Yeah. Very cool. And so you, you reached the 16 and then what did you go back up to? And now you're coming back down. Oh, I got back up to a 24, 22, 24. Oh, and, yeah. And That's hard. Get a 16 again. So yep. yeah, the 18 is getting a little big. So I'm excited. Yeah. Super excited. Yeah. You, in fact, on Facebook, you post a picture of yourself in a jumpsuit. How cool is that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of compliments on that. Yeah, it was gorgeous. Too. Yeah, a lot of friends were like, oh my God, I love the jumpsuit. I'm like, I didn't buy it because they're going to get the next size smaller. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, and that's so cool. All right. So um, what else, you know, if there was like one more thing to share with everybody that I just really want people to know, what would that one thing be? 
you know, just start where you are today. It's, mm -hmm. it's the hardest part is just starting, yeah. you know, just changing yeah. one lifestyle habit just to get a little healthier. That's the hardest part is just starting. Yeah. As soon as you start and you see the benefit to yourself and your health, mm -hmm. you're going to want to keep doing more, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know you're a big believer in super simple, like logical next step, something that would be actually easy and fun because then you do see the outcome so quickly. So even just like you were super inspired by a lady whose first goal was just walk out to her mailbox and back in, right? Yep. I told a woman two weeks ago to just start drinking water in the morning. The first thing she does in the morning is to drink a whole glass of water and I saw her um, yesterday and her skin looked amazing really? and I said yeah and she said it really I said yeah I said your skin looks so much better she's like well I've been drinking the water I said yay yeah that's cool I love it yeah and I know and you and I have discussed this about like um, a lot of heart attacks come because someone didn't drink water and took a really long hot shower. And um, I was thirsty this morning. I couldn't see my water glass. I usually have one there. I was like, oh, I must have put one there. Anyways, just spaced out having a drink of water and, and took a shower. It wasn't a long hot shower. But then I was like, wow, that, that wasn't cool. You know, I didn't even think to have a drink before getting in the shower, right? <laughs> so I remembered our conversation. I was like, hmm. yeah, yeah. So it's okay, right? You call them slip ups. Yeah. Oh. And they're okay. So tell us a little bit more about slip ups. Slip ups. Oh, how many do I... I could actually write a list of all of them that I've had. <laughs> um, and, but it's, it's fine. And in, in fact, I have a slip up that has been going on since January for myself. And um, I just realized yesterday myself that it's okay. You know, it's okay to have a slip up. Right. Um, there's a part of learning and changing that habit and refocusing exactly what's important at that time. And um, again, it's okay to have a slip up. Um, you know, a few slip ups of mine is, you know, as I tell you to drink your water, sometimes I get busy. And, um, but my body is just asking for the water. When I don't have it, I literally need to drink like two or three glasses right away because my body's like hello you forgot uh, <laughs> where yeah. before you were thirsty because of the diabetes but then when you got things under control then you weren't as thirsty so then you, it was like a different way you used to remember to drink water and that was labeling your your tumbler right Right. Yeah. How many ounces by a certain time of the day? Oh, yeah, and encouraging yeah. words. <laughs> yeah. In fact, yeah. In fact, I always remember that because I used to have a gallon and I, I used to put like a little mark on it um, throughout the day so I could finish it. Because mm -hmm. my used to tell me, try to get in a whole gallon of water. And I don't know how she gets that in, but, um, you know, it's different for everyone. Again, oh, yeah. listen, but listen to your body, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But main thing that I noticed was that, um, you know, it was really motivating to get to the halfway mark because it would be say, it would say, um, you know, you did it, you're almost there, or you're halfway there. It was, it was amazing. And then I always wanted to just finish it at the end of the day, because I wanted to get to the end to get the, oh, you did it, you know. Right. <laughs> I love now, it. Now I have a different uh, way of doing things. Like I kind of wake up in the morning and I drink that first glass, like I said, and it's usually about 10 to 16 ounces. And then I kind of try to get, you know, by, by a certain time, I put like a time limit. So by usually by noon, I try to get 60 ounces in. Okay. Uh, rest of the day might not end up so well, but at least I got my 60 ounces in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and yeah. really you get to be super careful if you're not drinking water to just slowly ease it in because your organs aren't used to it and you can hurt yourself. And what yes. is kind of that baseline uh, read? It's half your body weight in ounces. 
Yes. Um, there's uh, research that comes out in studies, uh, you know, but of course studies are different for everyone and you need to check to see where you're at and what you eat during the day makes a big difference too. But they say that half your body weight is what you should be drinking in water each day. In ounces. Mm -hmm. Right. In ounces. Yeah. And that makes a difference if you're eating vegetables and fruits throughout the day because you're getting um, some hydration from those things also. So yeah. Uh, drink tea, uh, herbal tea, that kind of counts too. So uh, yeah, point. let's talk about that really quick. Cause that's something I learned from you. Cause I always just thought tea was super dehydrating. Well, herbal teas are a little different. Um, regular tea has, um, caffeine in it. So it will dehydrate you just like coffee would. In fact, I believe black tea has more caffeine than regular coffee does, which is, crazy because I didn't believe it either. Then I was looking around and I said, oh, wow, it is. So, you know, it's very interesting to find out that. But I also found out in black tea, there's also flavonoids and green tea. I didn't know these things are actually beneficial for your heart. So I've been switching up my, my coffee um, for a, a caffeine, a caffeinated tea every so often just to help my heart. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, so decaf tea is is basically the thing, though. It's the same. Yeah, decaf yeah. Tea is the same as water. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and you sometimes would have the decaf tea at night. Tell us the benefits of that. Oh yeah, my new favorite thing at night is um, what's the name of it? Uh, name of it? Well, there's this one tea that I really love. I can't remember the name of it right now. <laughs> so this, this is the hydrating tea. Right? Yes. So yes. Yeah. Yeah, my son loves chamomile tea at night lately, mm -hmm. um, which is really beneficial for your gut also, but it's also hydrating, which mm -hmm. is great. So I usually add a cup of tea at night just to relax me um, and, uh, you know, just make me feel better. And it tastes really good. I can't remember the name of the one that I've been liking lately because I've been switching things up a little. Valerian but, uh, root is supposed to be a good one for sleep at night too. Is that right? Yeah. I'm not sure about that one, but the one I take, I'm trying to remember, I can't remember what it is. Man, I should run in and go get one. <laughs> so I can show it to you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cool. All right. Anything else you want to share, Demi? You know, each day you wake up is a different day. So just start where you are each day when you get up and where you're at. It's the hardest thing to just constantly think about what happened yesterday and what happened like a few months ago, what happened like two years ago? Oh, you know, I had lost this much weight because that's been coming up a lot for me, um, you know, and just remember that it doesn't matter what happened in the past. What happens next is really that matters. And yeah. the action that you take for that next step is where it's really at. I yeah. mean, if you don't take action, you're just going to stay where you are and you might even get worse. So oh it's better to take an action today to help yourself get healthier. Yay. Yay. This upcoming cookbook's going to have quick 20 minute recipes too. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah. And I'm excited about that because it's really great for working moms and just working people that need a quick meal and they want to make sure it's healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've been coming home sometimes really busy and I want to order something and I'm like, no, it's going to take you 15, 20 minutes to do something really fresh and healthy. Just do it. And yeah. it's better. I feel much better. My family feels better. Yeah. They all, so much they salt. They prefer it. <laughs> they yeah. Prefer so much salt and ordered in food. No, restaurant food. Yeah. Because it's got to sit there all day in the restaurant without going bad and salt a preservative. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. Cool beans. All right. Well, thank you so much, Demi. You're welcome. And thank you. Good luck on your book. Thank you. I can't Bye. wait to look out. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.